everybody and welcome back to the NLC. We're getting ready to go into our final game of the day. We've got ourselves Unique taking on Ruddy for our final game. Now, for all of you guys at home, uh, Ruddy, I don't believe have done their roster announcement yet. Obviously, all the teams playing in the league are very much aware of who's on this team. Uh, we ourselves are aware of who's on this team. Uh, it makes it a little bit hard because we've got six minutes until Champ Select starts. And I don't know if we should be revealing who's on it until the Champ Select starts itself. Um, but Aragon, let's just start with Unique. Let's talk about these guys then. You're muted, by the way, Aragon. <laughs> done it. How do I manage this? How do I manage this every time? <laughs> okay, um, Unique, Unique strengths, in my opinion, right? They have quite an unknown roster, right? I guess not. They have someone, people in the Nordic scene who played quite consistently, right? Nihui is uh, a really good top laner, right? I've played against him on solo queue. He's really strong. Um, a player I have played with, though, on the side of Unique is Peterson. It was a long time ago, right? But I think back to all the teams I've played on and the strength of the players that I played on. And whenever I think of, like, who was actually good, right? He stands out, right? I don't remember why it was like three years ago but he was actually really really good from memory so that's a strength um I, I think he was just really consistent and he never lost the game um paul yeah. has potential on the side of unique paul 227 looks extremely so strong in solo queue he's always super high elo right um one klp challenger plus um and then the rest of the team i'd say is a bit more of the middling uh middling uh side of things but those players are what i'm looking out for on the flip side though i'll let you talk about denvox now uh, yeah, so I mean that's going to be the first the first little spoiler. Dem this is a Denvoxny yep. team. Um, if it, if it's a Denvoxny team, it's always a team you've got to watch. He has been one of the most consistent and powerful AD carries we've had in the league. He's just looked so unbelievably good uh, for such a long time, and you know he's been one of these players who's always just been that kind of level below, like making it into that top leagues he's always been you know at the eu masters you know the what kind of one of the guiding lights of um one of the kind of guiding lights of of whatever team he's on whenever the nlc makes it to the european masters um he's always been just a very consistent ad carry so you know when you see dem on a team you instantly kind of like are gravitated to going okay this is going to be a good team he's a player though who i still think uh, falls into the habit of being very uh, resource intensive and whenever he's yes. on a team like you do have to funnel a lot into Denvoxy obviously the payoff for that is very worth it and you know when Denvoxy is given the resources and, and the time and the investment he will be able to put a game on his back but if a team can recognize that shut him down or kind of cause his entire team to crumble around him then that's his biggest weakness I'd say so I'm curious to see if Unique can recognize that issue and punish on that and then again, the question is, is who on that team, who on Unique is going to be punishing Den Voxney? That, that's the question yeah. for me. Like, does anyone stand out to you as someone proactive enough to put down and like kind of control the tempo of the game away from him? I think it's definitely Peterson. Um, but something important I just remembered I have to cover again. Uh, and it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a 180, but just... Just like all the other teams that I've um, I've talked to before every single game yesterday, I, t I asked Don Jake, Ruddy CEO, what are their expectations for the split coming up? And I got shown a picture, okay? I got shown a picture and a quote, and they want to bring up this picture on screen right now. The quote that goes <laughs> along with this picture is, shoes cost a takedown, fit cost a shutdown. Whatever that means. <laughs> that is what I was asked to show. By the big man himself. I what just, do you think of that hip Don Jake is honestly, I swear half the time he just speaks a completely different language. And but like it somehow. I never makes understand sense. him. I don't know. I don't know why. Like I never I don't understand him. a word he's saying, but I perfectly understand everything he says. He's so funny. He's such a funny guy. I love him. I love him. I actually met him during <laughs> I think it was off season this year actually. I hadn't seen him in person. I chatted to him before, but never like actually met him in person. I can't remember who he was with, and that person's gonna hate me for it. Oh god. <gasps> I, I think they're involved with Ruddy. I don't know. I, I, sorry, 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 dude. I met um with John Jake, but Regan? yeah, it wasn't Regan. No, no. I, I'd okay. remember meeting Regan. I'd remember meeting the uh meeting the rap god that is Regan. Um, I'm just excited to see this chance on it, mostly because that's when we'll announce. Uh, well, Ruddy will announce their roster to the to the general public. Yes. Uh, we kind of did we'll see what they're going to be looking to pick up. <laughs> but we did leak them what... We did, but. We had to fill. We had to talk about something, man. We had to <laughs> like, yeah, so, I, mean, I believe I believe Ruddy are going to announce their team, right? 
in Champ Select. They're approaching, a, they're having a unique approach. So for anyone who doesn't know, Ruddy haven't really announced their team yet. And they're going to have a unique approach where they're going to announce it by being in Champ Select and then posting something on their Twitter, if I'm recalling correctly. So keep an eye on that. Yes. Yeah. Um, Ruddy are, they do things different, but you know, it's Don Jake. So what would you expect? You'd always expect it to be something a little bit bizarre, something a little bit weird on that front. Um, but I mean, going into Champ Select, we now know the Denvox is in it. I think the meta is very Denvoxy favored. So that's something to kind of keep in mind as well. Like mm -hmm. this attack speed Varus, the Zeris, you know, the kind of hyper carry any carries are very much up his wheelhouse and like kind of champions he does play. But here we go. Getting in to the reveal. this game and seeing that roster. Holy moly, that's a scary team. You got Rifty, No Name, Nighter, Denvoxy, and Nash on the side of Ruddy. These guys are looking terrifying. As we are seeing the Rise getting picked up here. We're seeing the Varus getting banned away. Sorry, the bands, Rise and Varus getting banned away. Let's see what the next couple of bands are going to be from the side of Unique. And that is extremely stacked. If you look at that, you've got names like No Name, Rifty, who's been around for ages. No Name's the upcoming superstar, UK jungler, Nita, who has had a history in the uh, Super League, if I'm correct, on Mad Lions. Uh, and then Nash, who I remember as a Rakan main, who was incredible as well. As for bans, you get rid of the standard meta picks, right? As I said, uh, Varus, you know, the go-to meta underneath the top tiers, like Lucian Nami, who have been removed. Uh, Rise, really broken. We haven't seen a Rise today, which is really sad. I wanted to see one. Fiora taken away. <laughs> it's really funny. We have a lot of Fiora players on this league, right? A lot of Fiora Psychopath top laners. Maokai taken away, standard pick. And what is being left up? Well, to me, what I see is Yumi Zeri, Severe, Lulu Handshake. Um, and if that's up, maybe it creates a slower game for stuff like Kassadin. Um, other than that, Jax is up, and Sejuani. Those are the picks that I'm looking for, um, personally, and we'll have to see. Heimer's out. Ooh. Right. So, Caitlyn Lane's Surely potential, but I think what we're probably going to get. Zeri, Yumi, Severe, Lulu. That handshake. Yeah. Have to see I what they lock in. that's definitely going to be the game plan here. See what they're going to, which one Unique decides to put the, uh, put the emphasis on, and which one they would rather have on their team. Looks like it's just going to be that Zeri. So, the Zeri, Yumi going over to side of Unique. Unless Ruddy were ready for this and they have oh, an Rifty. answer in stock. Rifty is... For anyone who's not familiar with Rifty as a, as a as a top laner, he is a staple top laner. He is very, very... He's very controlled. He's He basically just doesn't lose lane. Like, that's how he plays. Like, he can be dominant, but, like, at the, in the worst-case scenario, he just doesn't really lose that lane. But you're going to see the Sejuani getting picked up here for no name we'll see what the uh yeah. follow-up is going to be for the side of uh ruddy are they going to look towards the ad carry i mean they probably need to think about it because i'm assuming this is going to be mm. a yumi lock-in for unique so if they don't go ad carry support in their next two rotations odds are the other side of it gets banned away so if they pick up yeah okay so they pick up the civet here so i assume we'll see a yumi coming from unique and then a lulu next pick for the side of ruddy yeah uh, interestingly, uh, Vi didn't get picked up by the side of uh, Ruddy, which is typically picked into the Zeri. Instead, they go for the Sejuani. Maybe they prefer the Sejuani over the uh, over the Vi, you know, um, because Vi doesn't do the best into Severe, in my experience. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't think so. I imagine you just pick Yumi or Lulu, depending on which one you prefer. Some teams prefer Lulu, but I imagine the majority prefer Yumi. There it is, right? There'd be boos if this was in the LEC studio right now. And then third pick, you probably pick jungle here, so your jungle pool doesn't get pinched. Stuff like the, uh, what, what else is there? The Wukong from memory. Wukong is yep. decent. Um, oh, what else is there? Viego, Vi isn't going to be picked. I think it's just Wukong. Yeah, no, Vi wouldn't what? get picked. I was like, I was trying to rack my brain. I was like, Syndra. It? it is Vi. Syndra. Syndra's all right. Okay, but the weird Syndra's thing right, is, is you, you talked a lot about this, where like the Vi Syndra combo is really, really scary. But obviously, yeah. when you're on the Sivir, you have the Spell Shield to block that out. But that doesn't necessarily mean the others don't. And they go for a Sona here. Man, I mean, I'm, to, quote, to quote Twitter, the Rusty Rodder announced... Uh, the Ruddy? The Ruddy, yeah, the Ruddy Rusty Roster Rudder. announcement is... The Rusty... I don't know what I'm doing. The <laughs> Tongue Twister. <laughs> it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's the best thing I've ever seen. I can't speak, apparently. The Ruddy Roster announcement is the best thing I've ever seen. See what they're going to be looking to ban away, though, as the Wukong is going to get taken away. Does get banned first out. First of all, see what the next ban yeah. is going to it, be. It makes sense. You're going to you're gonna be banning out junglers to pinch the pool when you have jungler and the enemy doesn't, right? What else could you ban, potentially? You know, what's under the next tier of champions? It's either going to be Vi or, you know, Graves or stuff like this. But you don't necessarily have priority. I'm really... I want to go back to that Sona pick. Because usually people match Yumi with Lulu. But Sona, I suppose, is another enchanter that can do something similar. 
Well, instead, what they're going to do is they're going to ban out Azir. All those safe kind of um, safe kind of mid laners. They're banning out for Naito. Maybe these are target mans. Maybe Naito is incredibly good, uh, incredibly good Azir player. I will say something that I highlight. Um, something that's been cropping up a lot more is uh, Cassidan. Okay, Cassidan is yeah. extremely good in slower games. And Yumi Zeri severe enchanter uh, games like those handshakes create extremely slow games as well which means that Cassidy can have spots right it really depends though you know like stars kind of have to align if he's under a lot of pressure a lot of upfront burst is not too great i don't think he's a straight up blind but with these kind of conditions kind of looks like it potentially could be but we'll have to see what the bans vi goes away i wasn't particularly scared for the vi honestly i don't think the champ's that great into severe but again maybe i'm wrong but once again, the Jax band, I think that's key. I think Rifty's an incredible top laner. And Jax is just so broken at the moment. I'm glad they got rid of it. So uh, one thing I will say is, sure, the Vi isn't great into the Sivir. But if they did pick Cassidy up for Nita, Vi Syndra basically makes that line really, really miserable. And yeah, we might see our first Cassandra at the NLC here running down the timer. And Dem Voxney is going to be locking it in. For anyone who hasn't seen uh, Cassante very very potent top laner at the moment i mean aragon me and you had a chat before this uh before the show started about you know the kind of top lane matchups and you know as a top laner you kind of gave me your your in-depth look on him and you said he's incredibly strong quite mechanically intensive but if there's somebody i trust to pick up a more mechanically intensive champion it is going to be rifty yeah i mean now you have your cassante sejuani combo melees I, I honestly i i was surprised i was kind of gobsmacked a second ago i was like wait we haven't seen cassante today how is this the first game of Cassandra we've seen when, honestly, it's being pickle banned in LEC and other leagues? So really surprising there, but I'm glad Rifty, you know, mechanical enough to pick it up. On the flip side, we see Zinzao picked up some early proactivity, right? You get your Vi, your Wukong banned out. That's your early proactivity go-tos. Beneath that, you get your tiers below. And like Zinzao is somewhere there where you can actually make plays with that with that champion early game alongside and creating setup for the uh, Syndra level six. Then you have your stone wall pick. This is really common into Cassante. You go like some kind of range champion. Nara is pretty common because you have move speed. You don't, you don't get hit by a lot of spells. And lastly, we have a Silas um, paired off another melee champion with the Sidwani to proc those passive procs. So also just kind of looking at the ultimates to steal away. Obviously Silas is amazing against Nara because oh. he is Nara on demand, but you were right. They do it. The there Cassidy it is. getting locked in here for Nita. I actually think the last time I saw Cassidy that I casted, it might have been Nita playing. I, I might I might actually be right there. It's been a while since I've casted hmm. a Cassidy. I'm pretty sure Nita was the one. Uh, all right, let's take a step back. Let's talk about win conditions. Let's talk yep. about how we think this game's going to go down. Aragon, break this down for me. Let's start with Ruddy. What are they going to be doing in this game? Okay, look, Wait I'm going to be real with you. There's barely any setup on... Uh either team early game right like really really yeah. we're gonna have a slow early game unless there are some shenanigans with um pre-6 cassadin which actually does a surprising amount of damage with electric ignite if he has that setup um i'd expect them not to, that not to work out i really think we're just gonna get a really slow game where champions come online at level six potentially and maybe we could see a herald contest but like it's it's not gonna happen right i think what we're gonna see is a really slow farm fest where syndra potentially goes something like first strike this is a really meta build at the moment where syndra goes first strike and gets like two items when um Cassidy has like one and a half or 1.3 items ish that's potentially what we could see other than that i'm going to be honest both teams just want to outscale and sit back and chill yeah i i think this is we're going to be ending on a more relaxed one so make sure you uh yeah. get yourself a drink stay hydrated because we are going to be in for a uh a slightly slower paced final game of the day i mean as soon as you see Cassidy, yeah. you know you wait till that level 16 when win condition that is the key thing when playing yeah. uh when playing Cassidy is that level 16 spike is enormous but like you're saying pre-6 with electrocute does do a fair amount of damage i wonder if they'll try and invest as much into niter as possible or if they just rely a little bit more on the dem boxing chain and niter is kind of like a a late game a late late game insurance just to make sure that this game does go in there just go in their favor no, no, no. Yeah, exactly. And then in top lane, it's just going to be farm fest. Typically with a Cassante, since this is the first Cassante you've seen, I figured I'd talk about it a little bit. A lot of it's just grass prop trading, right? Um, typically with Cassante, you know what you're going to get. He's an extremely disruptive team fighter, scaling champion, um, who can... I think Cassante, every single game of Cassante we've had in LEC, we've had Cassante's flip people into tower and push them under tower and kill them. Or like drag them through 10,000 walls into the tower. 
it's really common. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that as well. Rifty's incredibly mechanically competent. I imagine that might be the case too. Um, but I'm really glad they saw the Cassidy angle. This is something I've been thinking about a lot. Where the Cassidy angles? Because Cassidy he got a lot of buffs. Archangel Seraph's got a lot of buffs, right? These items are extremely potent, but a lot of people blinding them without much success. I think the best yeah. angles for Cassidy are definitely when you're against Maokai. All right, so teams take notes. Maokai creates slow games. Uh, having a Maokai on them in team creates slow games because like it generally becomes like an, about an objective setup, just taking neutrals. And then also if there's a, a Kastin, uh, sorry, a Maokai plus Severe Yumi or something like this on the enemy team as well, where you're doing that handshake, it's a free casting game. Just take it. The game's going to be so yeah. slow. It's unbelievable. Just blind it. And we're of Roa back as well. You know, it feels good, man. It feels real good to be a Kassadin player right now. But we are in yeah. to game for our final game of the day. Fresh off the ruddy roster announcement as Rifty is going to trade out. This is uh, he's a little bit of HP, but he's going to be happy. I believe he got a grasp there, I think. I don't think he did. I don't think it'd be soon enough. I think he had to charge at first. I don't oh, think you he might did, be right. I might yeah. be wrong. Yeah. No, you'll probably, but... you'll probably know a bit more about this than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Rifty's actually going to scout. You can see he's looking for information. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. But you can see uh, Rifty's actually scouted out blue buff. He's pinged as, they pinged as a ward, but now they know. The information is on the side of ready now. They know where Antware is going to be pathing to. Potentially, you could look for a, a, level, two, a level 2 or level 3 gank mid lane. Sorry, level 3 gank. But what's probably going to happen is he's going to path down to the bot side, make some plays bot side, but there's no setup. I'd imagine he looks mid. Um, otherwise, we're just going to have a very stale stale bot lane. But the information uh, game, like I said, is on the side of Ruddy. And uh, Nita just going to collect some farm on his tower. Incredibly pushed in. Typically, the nature of uh, Central Lane just bully early. And Rifty gets prior top. Does indeed. Is uh, going to be able to shove this one in for now. Is a. Uh... You see Nash make his way over towards his bottom side. Obviously, very, very powerful what I said early with the Q. Just able to get that poke off and get some powered auto stack as well down. Unfortunately, mm. it's just onto Pradurston, so it's a bit of damage off. And actually, with the level 2s coming in, they're feeling comfortable. But then Voxny gets a whole Ooh. bunch of damage oh, off and the bounce is enough. He goes down while attached. And Kyra, unfortunately, can't do anything but watch as his support falls away did you expect that damage i didn't especially as he entered back into, no. i thought he was playing battle yumi you know you can play battle yumi where you just trade auto attacks and then you can just hop inside the carry again it doesn't matter that you lost hp but that i think it's the healing what was that what followed him was it scorch and like a minion auto potentially followed him into um being carried on and he just dies right wow really surprising stuff but ultimately does it matter maybe he gets to his item spikes faster but both teams can't really force the issue even with a little lead so it's not as bad as maybe as if they was playing it's like a kill lane you know at the end of the day it's probably just going to go back to farming but still very surprising very very surprising indeed but ruddy coming fresh off that first blood heading back into the lane tier on nash nice and early as well that's a really early tier gonna be very happy with that one as well. rifty does miss out on the powered up part of the queue this <laughs> doesn't matter though Damn, that champion hurts. Yeah, really, really strong. And now he's going to hold the wave, so it guarantees to push into him. Really good stuff by Rifty. Proactive wave management is what I like to see. Nihu's he's going to have to burn TP here. Uh, Rifty might match because he doesn't want to lose out on that freeze. I think they're probably going to match here. We'll see. Or he just walks. No, he, he holds it. And now he's going to hold the freeze, and he's going to be really painful topside. But bot lane, Antwerp tries to find a gank, and doesn't look like anything's happened. Like I said, this is going to be a bit of a slow early game outside of that random kill. Yeah, we are going to expect in that. But, you know, an early kill onto Yasona, kind of just getting a little bit more items. Nice and early, just kind of accelerating somewhat of their tempo. But realistically, again, it's going to be around Nita and him getting enough kind of time and gold invested on the Cassadin and levels as well. Same for, you know, I mean, everybody wants to be scaling. This is, uh, both teams really kind of want that scaling. <laughs> you know, Kyra, yeah, expect this to, uh, expect this to uh, slow down. I guess, I guess we have a bit of time then kind of talk about everything yeah just uh, a little bit i mean Aragon, yeah, i think something your, you could your first day on cast right ah, it's so... like it's absolutely really i've had so much fun these games have been absolutely great i was i won't lie i was a little bit nervous at the start but you know what as i as i eased into it i had a lot of fun with you i just wanted to comment quickly though um i think something to to make note of is yumi does she get a lot of value out of the bruises she has on her team I think they're better. I think Xin Zhao back in the day, Yumi plus Xin Zhao was a really potent combo. Like the Xin Zhao would just never die, but with Xin Zhao nerfs and like 
you know, the meta changing. Is he still as potent? I'm not too sure. I think I'd prefer Sona in this instance. It's really good, though, that they didn't get the casting plus Yumi combo, because that is illegal. I'm not sure if you've seen any games with it in, like, the LPL. I, yeah, like this, but... don't worry. I'm, I'm well acquainted with that. <laughs> yeah, it's really nasty stuff. Early Sheen picked up by Cassante, but maybe there's a gank from No Name here. Nope. Decides it's not possible because we have a Cassidy in level 5. No shenanigans, no setup. Going back to farming. Who does this benefit? Interesting as well because we... I would say... Sedge? Sorry, carry we, on. We talked a little bit about... you. I mean, you talked a little bit about the, the kind of electrocute rune on Niter. Actually opting away yep. from that and instead going in towards the... Um, going in towards the... Conqueror? Uh, Conqueror. So wanting to play, you know... That is more... I just want to wait. Wait until the later game. And then, you know, when I can just infinitely R for a team fight and just absolutely destroy everyone. Obviously, it means he'll yeah, be running the uh, yeah. oh, presence of mind to that kind of mana generation to make sure that, you know, this isn't going to be as rough. And he's just going to always no, run yeah. out. But that does it's going to be a very, very snowball-y game if Nita <clears throat> starts to get ahead. No, for sure, for sure. This Conqueror is definitely more of a scaling option. You can see a lot of scaling options picked up, right? You can see the Ghost on the side of Severe. AD carries halfway through last year realized, wait, we can take Ghost and have the best team fighting summoner in the game if we're not having volatile bot lanes, right? So like this Enchanter bot lane meta, you just free farm, you take, you pick up a cull, like Cyrax has picked up here. You just pick up a cull and you just chill with Ghost and you eventually you come online third Drake or so. You have the best summoner, you have the best kiting in the game. And I don't know if you've seen a, um, a Zeri plus Yumi with a Ghost it's just like Sonic. You actually can't do anything. But once again, back to uh, ping ponging waves. And I think I'm favoring Ruddy right now. Although they did lose first Drake, not that it probably matters. Yeah, I mean, kind of just going back, Kyra does have the cleanse instead of the ghost. So obviously playing a little bit more towards getting caught out by that crescendo from Nash or the ultimate from No Name. Yeah. I think that makes sense because all it really takes is, you know, one ultimate from No Name. And Kyra, it doesn't matter if you got a Yumi, you die. You're just gone. So having the yeah. cleanse and then being able to flash out, rely on that mobility. Then Voxy, though, know, you know, there's not as much guaranteed hard engage. Like, you get caught by a scatter of the week. There's a lot of setup for that. Nihus could maybe find him with a Nar, but again, requires the Nar bar to be up and him kind of being positioned on a good flank. Like, the, the yeah. real threat to him is Antwer jumping in and then kind of insecting him with the ultimate into his team. And Ghost... The, the uh, spell shield and his ultimate means even if that does somehow happen, you should be able to get out from the follow-up and not get taken. Yeah, out. and I, I'd expect... I kind of like this draft, right? Because I'd expect um, there's multiple options they could take. They could just group up for dragon fights, or they could play 1-3-1 one one with that Cassidy and the Cassante. Both Cassidy and Cassante have extremely good side laning. You can see uh, Rifty picking up that Sheen, probably going to the Iceborne Gauntlet, which is extremely meta right now. It gives him insane dueling and sticking power onto that Nar, where a lot of kite. And Cassidy and uh, Cassante can just go into side lane permanently and win out, right? Syndra doesn't want to be in side lane, so... Naturally, what that does is that actually makes uh, Rift Herald more priority. I'd say Ruddy has a pretty big um, desire to get Rift Herald this game. You can see them pathing to it now because they want to be able to crack that tier one. And I don't think they can crack that tier one without Rift Herald, personally. No, I think they will definitely struggle to do so. Antwer has moved over, though, to see if he can try and contest it. And Unique have actually rotated their bot lane over to the mid side as well. So No Name is probably going to have to just a short look to try and steal this. He may have yep. to give it up. The rotation hasn't been there from Ruddy. They've kept Dunvoxy on the bot side. This is very Dunvoxy kind of style where he just goes to get Peterson that and Cyrix are going bot. Yeah, they actually are. This might be the moment. The smite oh. comes in. Nash able to steal it away. Misses the ultimate. But I mean, that does not matter. No name with the steal. Beautiful play. Look at bot. There's a kill. Oh, this was so good. Wow, I'm so Denvoxy impressed. Made actually, the this is an incredible play by Unique. Yeah, yeah, Denvoxny didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. This is an incredible play by Unique. They actually faked having pressure, right? So what happened was they started up uh, Herald and until the last second. They acted like they had numbers advantage because um, Ruddy didn't know where Peterson and Cyrex were, right? Halfway through that play, it was actually just a 3v4 and they were taking it confidently in the face. This is something Hillisang does in the LEC really well. He just fakes pressure. And because of that, because of that, Denvoxny thought that everyone was on Herald. Turns out, no, they were just faking. And Peterson and Cyrex come down and assassinate him through the and he just gets completely off guard. It was it caught off guard. It was incredible gameplay. Really, really nice stuff there. So that now puts Denvoxy in a little bit of a rougher position. Luckily he hasn't lost too much farm from that. He's still relatively equal, but with the gold going over the Kyra, 
he's going to be happy. He's 15 minions away from fully stacking that coal as well. So another injection of cash after that kill as well. Quick to follow. And Kyra will be spiking his item a little bit faster than De and Voxley off the back of this now. Very, very happy with himself on that one. Obviously, still has that threat of Nash with the crescendo. He can flash forward and look to catch if they want to set up for anything. But realistically, I think yep. it's going to take a little bit more of a flash crescendo to find a kill onto Kyra here. They may have to look to bring yep. no name down. And his ultimate is coming up fairly soon. So he will be able to use this and maybe turn the tides of this bot lane. Pings are looking to come down. I don't know if he's actually going to yeah. go for it. I think he's not entirely confident in where the vision is and if he's been spotted. Does, I believe, spot out getting caught by the Squires. So Paul feels a little bit more comfortable, but he hasn't been spotted. And now Kyra has to be careful. They're going to jump in. Catch him. Cleanse goes down. There's the Crescendo oh. to follow. Kyra jumps over the wall, but Nighter may look to catch him out. Not going to happen. Kyra having to burn the cleanse, but is able to get away scot-free. Just with a little bit of an overstep, but, you know, Zeri can dash 7,000 units over a wall. I was really worried because I thought um, Ruddy wouldn't be able to contest this dragon because Denvoxney didn't have his, um, what's it called? His summoners, right? He lost his flash on his ghost when he was um, uh, assassinated earlier. But now what's going to happen is they get a free dragon because of this pick oh! on Cyrex. The boomerang? Not quite. Uh, they got the UV here. Does look like he's going to go uncontested. Uncontested over to the side of Ruddy. I believe because he's just too low and they have to reset. Yeah, they're going to call it off. Potentially look for a steal though. No. No, no name. name is not going to have the same thing happen to him. But he, he just did. Another play over to Ruddy though in this bot lane. Yeah, Denvoxy went down to that solo kill, but they are firing back. They're able to get four plates bot side. Riftel does a lot. No name not risking giving up this dragon. Wants to get that for the team. Able to pick it up. Ability haste for the team off the back of that. And attack speed, if I remember right. Um, yeah. Actually, been a while since I've seen a hex head drake. I totally forgot what the stats are on it for a moment. Uh, but <laughs> it's ability haste and attack speed, right? Attack speed. I'm pretty yes. sure. Yeah. And ability haste. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the plate game, if you take a look across the map, the plate game is actually going really in favor of Ruddy here. Five plates and first tower over to Ruddy without heralding bot side. It just shows that the game plan was to cross map rather than contest that early uh, rift herald because then Voxnet was able to just chip away at that plate the entire time whilst they were roaming. Really, really solid stuff, valuing that gold rather than potential for a rift herald plate, even though No Name actually stole it. So everything kind of going the way of Ruddy right now. We are going to see the uh, minions get picked up there. But four plates over the Den Voxney, and you can see the gold lead now, 300 in his favor. So not anything absolutely massive, but, you know, considering that he went down nice and early, is going to be happy with that. Gets the Kraken Slayer. You can see Nita now got the rower finished up for himself as well. As the item mm. breakpoints, or at least those first items, are starting to get hit across the board yeah. here. Obviously, Kyra little bit behind Den Voxney on that front, but now Nita is rotating into this bot side. He's going to be the one to try and answer out. And Unique, just trying to grab as many plates as they possibly can on the way out just before heading off, maybe resetting now, getting that um, shield bow for themselves, and then actually being equal on the item front. And it looks like that should be the buy here for Kyra off the back of this. Yeah, and on, on the flip side, on the side of Nighter as well, finishing that Rod of Ages, it takes 10 minutes, right, to finish stacking Rod of Ages, so expect explosive gameplay around 23 minutes when he stacks it up. With that new effect of Rod of Ages where you gain a free level up, you know, he might be even close to level 16, probably realistically around level 15 at that point, um, but still very, very close, and I can already see that little, uh, that, what's that copy pasta with the clock? That's my favorite one, by the way. That's absolutely my favorite one, where it's like 15 out of 16. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you know yeah. Like Oh, I can't remember it, but I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. Um, but on, then you see up top side, you see the Iceborne Gauntlet almost completed uh, for Cassante. Hefty CS lead, considering there's almost no, like, um, intervention in this lane, right? Rifty has developed Rifty. almost a 20 CS lead. Yeah, true. It's a Rifty you know lane. I'll That's just it. how it goes. Nothing I happens, and Rifty. then you realize Rifty has a lead. That's literally how every Rifty lane goes. Like, the guy's just so stable. Yeah. He's so good at he incredible. That. Like you said, such a rock. He's got himself and, uh, the ice I played against as well now. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I guess. What is it like playing versus him? I guess because you've got and, actual experience that I've watched him play a lot, but half the time, and, yeah. You don't I mean, I was just trying to play. think. Of, I was trying to think of a way to word it, and I was just, I was just sitting here. I don't know how to describe it. It feels horrible. 
<laughs> he just he just stomps late and you're just sitting there like what can i do better but then he just wins and kills you and i i remember having a game where i played alawi into his volley bear or volley bear into alawi or something like this a long time ago i was down 70 cs <laughs> the man is a machine but it does look like ready you're gonna get this next neutral objective and uncontested potentially because they have prior in both lanes uh, it looks like there's potential for some level of a, uh, a turnaround. Kyra's popped the ultimate there. They do catch it out. The final chapter's been burnt, but with the lockdown onto Antware, it's so dangerous. He jumps back in, and he's immediately taken down by Nita. They do get the scout of the week off onto Denvoxy, but the heal is there. Kyra has to flash away from Nita. He can't really see what he's doing. He needs to be so, so careful. I am surprised Antware jumped back into that, but is able to get away, and no name. Is going to pick himself up that Rift Herald. So second one back over to R Ruddy. They've got two in a row. They are on it with the objectives other than that one dragon. Take a look at that, that um, Radiant Virtue healing. The inbox thing drops really low and then just takes massive healing. Look, watch the healing there. 276 over and over again. Radiant Virtue, I'm telling you. Do you remember Runic Bulwark? This is the new Runic Bulwark yes. where if you do not have a Radiant Virtue, you just lose the game. This item is cracked. At these team fights, every single one we've seen today, someone has Radiant Virtue, someone doesn't, and someone wins. It's always the Radiant Virtue team. I think what we're going to see in a meta developing in the future is like, if the team doesn't have Radiant Virtue, you just lose if the enemy team does. Do you remember Runic Bulwark? I think you've been playing for a while, right? Uh, I was season four. I'm trying to remember. I don't... Vegas. Was it out? Oh, potentially maybe not then. Maybe I'm too old. It might have been. I think it might have been after after I started. I uh, yeah, I right. was I was basically... a season four guy. Ah, oh, okay. It basically gave like AOE MR to everyone, so it was just essentially broken. Right? Oh, I ones. do remember that. Yeah, the original you version of Ages. This? I remember Ages. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it was no, a shield and like everyone me. standing near it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, my, so I no, mean, that's the impression been... I get regardless. There's been some really cracked items over the years. The worst combo yeah. was when, like, the Banner of Command and, like, ZZ Rot era. <laughs> like, those were just, like, items yeah. that were getting picked up by supports or junglers and stuff. It was just, like, lanes were being pushed by people who weren't there. It was so ridiculous. Banner of Command I miss ZZ Rot, though. Though. Yep, I miss ZZ Rot so does much. does look like they're posturing, it's such a good item. It might be an engage. No? They're just posturing around it. You can see that Rifty's actually quite happily doing the dragon off on the side. Knight no. able to shift away. He's level 12. He's four levels away from that, like, uh-oh, it's over moment. There's that Nihu is in Nar, but it's timing 12. out. So I actually don't think Unique can contest this much more. As a Rifty looking to try and get his interrupt, trying to knock back, but not can't quite get it. Can Antwerp steal this away? No, he's caught out. They throw the ultimate down. Dragon secured for the side already. And Antwerp being forced away. Rifty on the back line being such a nuisance. He's unkillable. They can't find him. Rifty's alive still. And Ruddy just walk over Unique. Only Paul is standing. A four for none team fight for Ruddy. And all the AoE shields and the heals from the Radiant Virtues, the Sona AoE shields and healings, everything is just too much for the damage for the side of uh, Unique. At the start of that fight, I wanted to comment, no summoners for Cyrax. The second he gets pinned against the wall from Rifty, there's nothing he can do. He can maybe hop over the wall, but at that point he's way too chunked. He can't um, cleanse it. There's nothing he can do. He just takes so much damage, perma stun, And then you can see Rifty just stays alive on 2 HP forever because of all the AoE healing and shielding. And where does, where does that leave us with this game? Well, they're just so much stronger. Now, I think what they can do is to branch off into a one through one and play for those tier two turrets whilst also going for that mid turret. Potentially play for those flanks as they push in those uh, side waves and then go upwards. And maybe even that Baron in a minute's time. Well, hey, that's going to be an early Baron, but I mean, they, they probably do have the damage at this point. I mean, two items on Sivir, not the big, big spike lock, that kind of three, but with the Kraken Slayer, yeah. with the Sona buff, you up, he sure. should be on it. Oh, Rifty's oh. found pull. Oh, I think he just that pushed that, right? Real he hard. had no idea. No, he, he didn't see it coming. He just, he never saw it coming. It got him. There's a dead boxy. Now at that point where waves just aren't a real thing. And oh, that's such a beautiful ultimate by No Name. Perfectly placed onto Ooh. Kyra. He doesn't even see the point in popping the cleanse. Instead, just accepting his demise, falling down, and his turret is quick to follow. I might be sold on a 20 minute Baron now. This is a very early yeah. Baron available to Ruddy. 
So what we were talking about with before, where you just push in the side waves and then move up the flank, that's the biggest advantage you get from taking that tier one turret, right? You get the, you get the ability to move past sideways and potentially even dive. But can I just say, uh, seeing No Name snipe that, whenever you see Sejuani throw an R mid Q dash, it's so extremely satisfying to see it actually connect. I don't know what it is about oh, it's it, but just the animation cancel. I think it's absolutely it's glorious. But yeah, the, the twenty minute Baron is looking more and more real. But I think what's going to happen more likely is just more split pushing, more one through running, more playing for turrets and camps. I think that is the main goal here. I think that's also the smart goal. I think you know. Going for yeah. a Baron, there is still a world where, like, Antware could just give his life and secure the Baron. Or, you know, a big ult from Nihus could maybe secure a couple of shutdowns. So, you know, the safer play is just acknowledge that you've got uh, control of the map and the game. Play around Vision, and then if opportunity comes up, you know you can probably burst it down and step Molly? away. But other than that, just control this. As right now, Rifty going in for a trade versus Nihus. He's been slowed. Isn't going to be able to catch them with that second part of the queue. Or the third part of the queue. So Rifty not going to find himself a kill. But that's the ult out from Nihus. And now Ruddy knows that the Nars down. And that teleport, while it's still available, probably not going to be used. And with the bases coming in, they know that they can at least damage check this Baron. As a bit of a uh, bit of a position has been set up from Nita in the bush. As uh, Nash is making sure. This is a healthy Baron, remember. They've got the healing. The top one is a Nita's TP? coming in on TPs? the flank. I don't think he was seen. They might have seen him. Nihu's actually jumping in. Rifty's on that flank as well. There's No Name. Catching in onto one already. Antwer's been caught. They knocked them back for the moment. With a big gnar out to make sure that nobody's getting caught. Antwer has to dash away. But already Unique are too low on HP. As Niter didn't quite find that flank opportunity. But even so, Ruddy just pressure forward. And again, they got a Sona. They can heal back up nice and easy. This is a really, really safe Baron for them to do. And just peel away from. Yeah, and they all have they have the turning tools, right? They have that Sejuani, they have the Sejuani marks to do that. I think last time they were too scared because Nar had turned Mega Nar, right? They didn't want to fight into that. They said, you know what, guys? We'll just disengage and redo it again. It does look like it's going to be contested. And like you said, the sustain is just too good. No name can tank this forever, right? He can just actually just sit there oh! on that flank. Nihui nearly dies. That was disgusting. He's not even got his rod fully stacked. I actually think with a fully stacked rod there, that would have been news. One more stack. So, so close. This is getting a little dicey, though. I mean, they, again, they've still got the healing, but I think this is a toss, but maybe they don't want to be taking Antwerp! Oh, Antwerp flashes in. It's the burger flip flip wrong, and Antwerp goes down. No! He comes in with the steal. He will give his life, and so will the other members, but it is absolutely not a problem. Niter will not connect on with the ult over the wall. Baron stolen away by Antwerp. Phenomenal stuff. Uh, and you just gotta wonder what, what happened there? Baron was on 3k HP and suddenly it gets smited away? Was it bursted down by Syndra? I'm not sure. I hope we get a replay of that, but I don't think we will, unfortunately. Really good stuff from Ant uh, from Antware for stealing that. Really insane. Because he could have just been bursted down, but he managed to survive long enough to get it. I want you to hit brain. Take a look at Cassidin and his stat line and his inventory. Are you scared? Yeah, I'm like, I'm mega scared now. He's going to get a base as well. I believe he got two kills in that fight. He's almost level 16. Let's see what this base is. Oh, I think that was a needlessly large... Oh, no, he didn't, but he unsold the needlessly large rod. Goes Fiendish Codex. Okay, smart build. Going stopwatch. Getting towards that Zonya's. Getting himself some safety. But that's almost a level 16 Cassidy. And, you know, it's relatively early. We're still only 23 minutes into the game. Yeah. Like, Ruddy hard taking over. I was expecting like a 40 minute slugfest. That's not what Ruddy were planning. They might have picked scaling, no. but they just sped up the scaling. They've hit the spikes. This is the Rod of Ages spike where you hit you hit max stacks and you get a free level. Absolutely insane stuff. Maybe they'll get a pick on Antwer here. The slow comes in. Maybe a severe oh, They're going to be able to find him. He has popped the ultimate jumps in onto Demvoxny, but that is not going to do him enough as the healing's there, but not going to come through. Demvoxny gets his first kill of the game, securing that one onto Antwer. And with Dragon spawning up in a four minutes time. So a bit of time before that Infernal Soul comes in. A little bit more time for Ruddy to now use. Well, try and negate this Baron. But we'll see Antwer getting caught here. Uh, just a little bit too greedy, overextended really. Trying to get vision where there's no objective. So a bit confusing. But 
On the flip side, you have Nifuis. Uh, I'm never going to pronounce that name correctly. I'm so sorry. Um, getting an objective bounty down bottom. It's not the biggest objective bounties. For uh, people who don't know, objective bounties, they're different for every objective, right? Tier 1 turrets are like the smallest ones, but still not bad. Anything, every little bit helps when you're this far behind trying to trade. I just realized it's 112, right? So definitely yeah. that's going to be, you know, a sigh of relief. You're probably going to play for the next bounty at top side here hopefully but you definitely have to be strong enough to contest this dragon that's upcoming like you said it is soul infernal soul onto a cassadin who's already 5-0 i think that just kabooms the game a little bit too much yeah it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a rough bounce back from unique obviously they do still have scaling elements they have the yumi zeri uh you know they've got good team fighting potential with the fact that a nah can really turn the tides of a fight but like we were saying earlier i think the big problem for unique is a lot of their like a lot of their tools and like engaged scenarios are very situational or like kind of misplacement. When on the other side, Muddy can just do this. They can just pop R and run people down and where falls to Demboxny. A level 16 Niter is here. Tick tock, the time is up and Paul is being run down. Good scat of the week, but it's only gonna buy him some time as Niter finishes himself up his sixth kill of the day. Absolutely phenomenal stuff coming in from Ruddy. They went from roster announcement to a win in a very, very close period of time. As Unique Nihus is being run down. Rifty looking to catch on to Nihus will not find the bot because the damage is there from Niter. And this might just be a cracked open base here as the inhibitor falls down to Ruddy. They're not going to push for more. I think the death timings are a little bit too short for them. Too many members up, but this is a very, very scary ruddy. And, and that whole play starts off with getting flanked in the mid lane. This is exactly why when I open up with like discussions on what's important, what are the win conditions, you've got to wonder how important mid lane turret is, right? Look at Knight, level 16. He just flanks mid lane, finds that pick because there's no mid lane turret for um, the side of Unique to fall back on. Right? So he doesn't care. He can just walk past them and kill them uh, as he pushes in top wave. Right? He shifts down to shifts down to mid lane and just finds that pick. And they just ult Antware. And this poor guy has been ulted nonstop. Ends up 0-5-0. And unfortunately, just didn't find that early game advantage he wanted to. We've been talking about how these are early game proactive champions. But there's realistically just no setup outside of maybe a Syndra stun. Some Telegraph Meganar stuns. You know, he can't do anything aside from be like a Yumi carrier. But then... Is that worth having a Zinzao on your team for? Not really, right? I think he's just been outscaled by the Radiant Virtue, Sejuani, and the rest of the team. Well, it looks like Unique could go for a desperation play onto Rifty. He has no ghost, but the problem is, is Antwer's being caught. He tries to catch them Voxny. The ult's on, so it's a little bit hard to get the damage off. But look at how much that Boomerang Blade did. So much damage. Meanwhile, on the top side, Top lane turret's gonna go down. The bot back's coming in. Both of these two top laners just brawling, but not able to fully connect onto that damage for the moment. As Nash is coming in on the flank, gets the crescendo on to pull, but there is no real follow up available to them. Meanwhile, Niter is in the top lane, taking down an inhibitor tower. This inhib will fall as well. That's a level 17 Cassadin. He is gonna be so hard for anybody to deal with. I mean, Paul, two levels behind the Cassadin here. He will get popped if, if Knight of the yeah. Sides, he wants him dead. And honestly, what I saw there was a really good level of discipline. Did you notice? I think they could have 3v4'd. Do you agree? They were so strong. There was potentially yeah, yeah, like a 3v4'd. Yeah, but they decided, you know what, guys? We've got Knight at topside. We'll just play the 1-3-1. One one. We'll back off, off of Meganar. We won't risk anything. This is the only way we lose. And they play the macro app properly. This is reminding me a lot of Nord. You know, very similar teams. Whereas on top of that, we have Riddle, who's way more volatile. So extremely, it, this is exactly what I wanted to see. How the different personalities of the team, teams, you know, like how they appear. And I think what we have is a really disciplined macro team. They're being coached by Hidon, yeah. who's like a really proficient, you know, positional coach. So maybe that's an effect right there. But yeah, really good stuff to see. And now they just take Baron and you've got to wonder, are they just going to, after they take this Baron, are they just going to siege an end? Oh my. And what you're seeing as well is just, you know, a lot of experience on one roster. Ruddy have an incredibly experienced roster and 
you know, they are making it work for them as Rifty jumping in onto Kyra. He's going to try and chase forward. He's looking for the knockback. Doesn't quite connect it, but in oh. the sidelines, Niter is assassinating Paul. A double kill onto the Cassidin. That's going to be a double picked up for Demboxny as well. Only Nihus remains as he will be run down by the entirety of the Ruddy team. Rifty secures the ace for the rest of them. They've got two ways to supers. They've got all of the power necessary to close this game out. The death timers are too long. We expected a long one, but it's under half an hour. And Ruddy take their first win of the season. I mean, what happened there? Suddenly they go from Baron to ending the game. I guess it was inevitable, right? Because they had a level 17 casting, but still instantly they run at like Mac 10 and they're just ending the game after getting one pick crazy stuff really well played from a macro standpoint they don't rush the game they take their time they get to certain spikes right they identify they have these win conditions of cassadin uh really slow scaling bot lane as well and it's honestly good macro yeah no absolutely i mean the guy the guy's just played super super well i expected it to be you know very denboxy focused um but it really wasn't like denboxy sure was a carry in his own right but like that was just a, a complete everybody on the team show. There was no real star there. I mean, like, Rifty stepped up on the Cassante. Yeah. Niter was just flawless on the Cassidy. No Name just didn't miss. Every ult connected onto at least somebody who they could then turn around onto. The bot lane, you know, they had their moment to farm. And then when they started joining the fights, the damage was there. That was just a very, very flawless game from Ruddy. And they look yeah. like a serious team who are going to be very, very scary for anybody in the league to be playing yeah. versus. I'm scared of the solo laners. Honestly, you say no one really shined, but like, I kind of think the solo laners were pretty darn good and kind of scary, you know? Rifty was almost solo killing. He did solo kill, you know? Um, like, granted, it was later on in the game when he had global gold, but still really good stuff. And he was counterpicked. Remember, he was counterpicked. He got Nar picked into him after picking Cassante. Um, on top of that, you had Naita, who was getting these insane flanks, right? So they can't only just play mid early game they can also play mid game and late game where they find these one through one flanks um into mid lane and find these game winning team fights and then they also have the discipline to like only fight when they should because they back off and let knight to split push i just want to i want to find myself here when i say nobody's shown like they all sh they all looked great and they all were shining in their own yeah. light but they were all shining so bright but nobody stood out as a star i guess uh but the solo lanes That's definitely were very very scary and i guess while we're waiting for the interview after this game the question then comes who is the mvp who do we give that to because mm. that is probably the hardest one of the day i i i'm gonna start it by saying niter i just think his cassidy looks super good yeah he had a massive lead over paul he didn't die all game and you know when you pick cassidy you are relying so heavily on scaling and he just sped up that timeline by being very proactive on the map and getting himself involved in the action but like that scaling happened way quicker than typically you'd expect from a cassidy so i'm gonna say uh Niter is my mvp for that game so aragon unless you disagree with me uh i want to hear your thoughts i disagree that. um i think Niter played really well but i do think you know once you get to level 16 cassidy Whilst that's insane, though, what he was doing was like macro play was really, really, really good. He was pressing R and one shotting people, right? So, um, who, who else? I think, I think also I mean, he, like keep a in no mind, discredit to him. No discredit. Keep in mind, he right? was like he... seven zero before level sixteen. That's that's a that's big fair. argument there. Like that guy was playing well. It wasn't like oh, I just that's hit level uh, level sixteen and now I win. Like he was I... winning before he hit level sixteen, and that just kind of guaranteed the damage. Yeah, I, I think I think I think something that I maybe. Um, a bit controversial i think no name i think his snipes and like no, consistently you know finding game winning fights team fights was really good or rifty i think it's so hard to toss between them um i would vote no name or rifty oh man, man this is really so difficult. hard can i phone a friend to make can i phone a friend <laughs> we're meant to make the call so do you know what when we get into the interview i'm gonna ask them for the mvp and they can decide who okay that sounds MVP good that match because we i, I think I don't think I could come up. I don't think either of us would come up with an answer for the MVP, but we wouldn't be satisfied for. So we'll ask you. The yes. problem is, is I don't know who the interview is. So if it's if it's back if it's back, uh, uh Denvoxney. Okay, so we got Denvoxney. So the problem we got is we can't ask Denvoxney because he'll just vote himself. He's an daily carry. They always vote for themselves. <laughs> so yeah, true, true, true. Actually, true, true. we'll put no. We've we've got three people who aren't Denvoxney. We'll ask Denvoxney out of those three who he thinks MVP is. Um. That's how we'll. That's how we'll decide this. Uh, no, no, yeah, we'll ask unbelievably him if he good says game, from buddy. 
Yeah, yeah I, I, well, we'll ask him. Stuff. And if he says himself, then we ask the rest. I think that's the best. Yeah. Part. But yeah, no, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. I think I think AD carries always work for himself. <laughs> Bloody AD carries. I mean, so let's kind of go back on this game because I think the well the day in general. I mean, all of our first three games, while you know I'd say relatively decent paced, were fairly close, right? They were relatively close in in the kind of overall outcome. This game was one that didn't feel close. This felt like Ruddy just had Unique's number the whole game yeah. and were just very controlled. And I think that's, to me, what makes them look the scariest. I think uh, the fact that Ruddy didn't have any real shaky moments this game compared to like our other teams like Riddle. We had them pegged as like an insanely strong team. Still it's a little shaky in the early game. Same yeah. for Nord. Uh, Domino versus Verdant was a close game at the beginning as we kind of expected but all of these teams had their mistakes and their issues ruddy didn't seem to have that now is that unique just look a lot weaker or is that you know ruddy just look a lot better and kind of more put together than the rest of the guys so i'm excited to see what ruddy look like versus the riddles versus the nords and kind of versus these top teams no, no, for sure. I think that's definitely a big question mark, right? And we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think this wasn't exactly a fair, you know, display of unique skill, considering they had silly mistakes like Yumi randomly dying yeah. level one, right? Like, I don't think that's exactly replicable. I don't think that's going to happen consistently. Um, I think unique does definitely have potential to be a mid mid tier team. That's where I would say the ceiling is potentially. Um, but for sure, I think Ruddy are really good. That was convincing. I agree with you. I think, I think that Ruddy uh, looked the most stable for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we actually have Dem Voxney standing by for the interview after that one. How many times have I spoken to you, mate? Congratulations on the win. Uh, really, really dominant game coming in from you guys. How are you feeling? Yeah. Right now? Uh, obviously, it's good to uh, get a win in the first game. Like, uh, we, you know, are scrimming for a little bit. There's been a, a lot of crazy things happening in the offseason. I can't really get into it too much, but. Uh, getting a first win is really nice. Uh, means that you know we've improved a lot, I think, and I think uh, we showed a decent game today. Like I think we had like, a few different tempo mistakes and a few different uh, whoopsies, uh, which we will have, you know we can learn from. So it's the best when you win and you can learn from the game. So uh, I'm really very happy about. I just want to ask, since you're an AD carry main, actually, I've been waiting for an AD carry to come on the uh, interviews to ask them. What do you think about the future up, uh, future future meta? Because right now we have quite a stale, you know, just farm fiesta. It's like very, you know, what's coming, right? What do you think about that forty percent crit chance uh, change? That's the main one I was wondering about your opinion. Uh, I think uh, they're actually it's actually quite good. Um, the problem is right now that on second item I, on almost any AD carry, you're like, well, I just need a crit item so I can go my IE or my uh, yeah, no worry and. It's so annoying because, if, for example, on many champs, like Aphelios, Caitlyn, you can go collect them and you're useful on two items, but on three items you already fell off because you don't have your LDR. And uh, you can't really, if you go LDR, it's really bad to go second. No one has armor yet, no one has uh, health yet. It, it's really, like, it doesn't feel good at all. So being able to just build your Mythic IE and then, okay, do they have armor? Then you can build the LDR if it's useful. Okay, they don't have any armor, then you can build collector, then you can build Luther. So it makes it way smoother. I think in pro play, it makes you spike way harder on two items. And I think it allows you to just like actually play the game on two items more. I don't know if it is gonna like change the AD carry meta, so per se, because I think right now what are we seeing? Dushan, Sevier, uh, Seri, champs like this, okay they're all going to do the same thing still. So I don't know if it's going to change the meta. I think it's just going to be uh, a very nice, less frustrating, uh, you know, build path uh, in the game. And I think that's it pretty much. Uh, so I'm going to pull it a little bit out of the bot lane and talk about the overall uh, league mm -hmm. as itself. So obviously that was a very dominating game. Um, when we look at the other games we've had today, they've been, you know, even the one-sided ones had like a slower start uh obviously looking at kind of riddle and nord as two other really really strong teams i'd like to get your thoughts on like on the teams playing and the other teams in this league you know who are you looking at as like teams that uh you're excited about are there any teams you maybe we might be underselling and you think could potentially be dark horses of the uh of the league um i don't know i i obviously it's hard for me to say even as a player because it's my first time seeing them play as well, right? So uh, yeah. 
as much as you know you can speculate as a player you're just focusing on yourself at the start of the season figure out what's happening try and get better and then uh, you don't really know what the other teams are doing either they're probably like, most likely they're doing the same thing uh, so my guess would kind of be the same as as probably the general sentiment right now which is uh, nord and riddle are looking to be uh, the two other in my opinion strong teams um, it's hard to say from just one game i think both of them won their game pretty handily had some mistakes here and there but like i don't think as a first game that says anything really because that can be like one of a thousand things and it can be fixed in two days probably uh, so those are the two i'm looking on uh, looking at and yeah, I think uh, tomorrow we have red right, so we'll see. Uh, it's a good like early season test. I think uh, we can win, we can lose. Uh, it's hard to say right now. Okay, so me and Aragon uh, have been asked after every game to come up with an MVP. Uh, we've been pretty good at deciding and agreeing upon who we think is the MVP. Um, we couldn't agree on this one, so I'm curious, you know, what you who you think the mvp is we narrowed it down to uh to three players so i'd like you to decide who the official mvp of this game is uh because we can't agree so it's between rifty no name and nighter i'm sorry mate you didn't quite make the cut <laughs> who do you think was the mvp for this game for you um who was mvp uh probably i don't know didn't make the, why did no name not make the cut wait no, no, he did. No, no, it's, it's, it's Rifty, oh. Rifty, Nighter, and No Name for the free. Oh, so, yeah, all yeah. Those yeah. Me and Nash didn't, didn't do much. Uh, not gonna lie. I think uh, give it to No Name, I guess. I, I don't really think it matters here. It was just like team things, usually. Like, we weren't doing anything special. You know, there wasn't one guy popping off, did a 1v2 play. Like, Rifty was just farming on top. Like, did a one solo kill, I think, inside. And uh, mm. Kessel was farming. Like, there was nothing happening because I think we had a good draft and. Uh, I don't know, like we were just chilling. Uh, <laughs> I think the most valuable player of this game was uh, maybe Coach, Coach Cliff, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> hit on it was the a channel. solid draft. It was a very solid <laughs> draft. Uh, Denboxy, thank you very much for joining us. Congratulations on the uh, the win. Uh, good luck with your games coming up over the next couple of days. I'm very excited to see you play versus the likes of Riddle and Nord. I think they're going to be super, super fun games. But until then, we'll speak <laughs> to you later. We will see you in a little bit. And we actually have our loser from the previous game ready uh hello i am going to apologize first of all how do i say your name before we go into this interview can you guys hear me fine is it picking up the... i can hear yeah, you we fine. Can hear the... okay good uh, so it's ikine i don't know if it's ikine. the same but yeah that's close enough i apologize if i get that wrong during it's the fine. process of this uh it's this fine. interview first of all hello and welcome to the uh welcome to the show uh, sorry about no. that loss. Unfortunately, uh, let's talk a little bit about the um, let's talk a little bit about the kind of the process of getting into the season because obviously you know it did feel like a lot of the NLC stuff was a little bit kind of crazy towards the end of the uh, the end of the year, get, end of last year, going into this year. You know, how long have you guys been playing together as as a team, and you know how is the how is the prep getting into the season looked? I mean. I wouldn't say exact time, but not, not too long, let's say. Uh, it's been way too long of an off-season, I would say. A um, lot of up and downs, a lot of different moments that made it harder to build a team. But I think we managed to get a good team together. But I think today showed that we haven't had nearly enough time together. So, um, yeah, just a better team won today, right? And it wasn't us. I wanted to ask, right, um, because I asked the other team, I asked Ruddy's Don Jake, how they, they expect things to go. Where do you guys see yourselves? Like, what are your goals, your aspirations? What are the vibes? Like, do you guys think you're going to come out into playoffs and swing? Like, are you gonna are you aiming for first place? What's going on there? I mean, like I said, what is it when you start that late as we did? I don't know exactly how, when other teams started, but probably earlier. So I think mm -hmm. the first few weeks probably going to be a bit rougher. But I mean, no, no matter what happens, like, you can always have a chance when you get on the riff, right? So, no, like every every game is an opportunity to try to be better, try to win, try to learn, and uh, like I think top four is still global. You know, that once you get to playoffs, then it can depend on the day, right? So, uh, I think mostly based on just starting so late. The main main thing is that we can get so much together now and then ramp up at the end of the split and be able to actually crack the top four, and then you know again once you're in there, maybe 
opponents have a bad day, maybe we smurf and that's it, right? So um, as long as we can compete for the top four, I think that's like um, that's a that's a good goal for us. So uh, do you guys right now see another team? You know, I think there's an obvious kind of like we we. We think we have a good idea of like who our top three teams are at the moment you know obviously things can change over the course of the season but do you think there's another team that like who is your well it's not do you think who do you think is the team that are going to be kind of your rivals the team that will be denying you maybe a spot in that top three in that top three top four area you know who do you think are who do you think is the team who's probably the most threatening to you guys right now out of like the obvious top three yeah, I mean, I think everyone probably agrees that Riddle, Ruddy, Nord are the top three most likely, right? So I would say, I would assume at least, I haven't seen too many tier lists, but I would assume Vanir is probably like fourth place for a lot of people. Um, so I think that's who we then have to beat if you want to be able to make it to the top four, right? And then of course, I mean, I think it's always fun meeting a lot of, um, a lot of the new two guys and there's a few people as well in the league who have been on Unique before, right? So uh, I, I have my personal eye on them as well, like Snubby, for example. Mm. I mean, it's it's been a it's been an interesting uh, kind of off season going into this season because, you know, last year I got to cover quite a bit of the uh, Div Two as well, and it's nice to see some of the players from Div Two playing uh, playing in this league right now, and you're seeing a, a bit of a shake up. Um, I guess you know that kind of. That kind of rounds everything out for me. Um, you know, I just hope hope we get to see some good games coming in from you guys. I know this first one was a rough one, but Ruddy are a terrifying roster. I think we can all agree on that. And I hope to see maybe some revenge come in from you guys a little bit later on. So thank you very much for joining us here, Ikane. And uh, good luck with your games you. coming up tomorrow. See you later. Thank you. See you. And there we have it, Aragon. First day of NLC done. Your first day on the NLC as a caster done as well um really really big stuff coming in uh we had honestly i think a lot of the general expectations were met you know i think every team i mean we were 100 percent on our wins for the day so i mean not a massive surprise on that front uh but you know i think the way in which some of these teams won might have been a little bit more uh a little bit more touch and go than we expected at least in the beginning right yeah, I mean, I think I think we all had our predictions for. Um, do you remember the Domino game where Rude Dude predicted Domino to win yeah. and not Verdant? I believe. I think yeah. we were all a bit concerned that maybe Domino would actually win. You know, there, there were games which were close. Oh, there was a moment. Yeah, yeah, first, yeah. For my first day, I think I got, we got some absolute bangers. Right. Yeah. I wish Riddle won a bit more convincingly. They seemed a little bit shaky. Um, other than that, it was there was a lot of expectations that were met. Um, but those are the main surprises, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it has been an amazing day here at the NLC. I'm going to quickly just look over to my right on my other monitor and give you what tomorrow's games are because we don't have a graphic for that. So uh, we got ourselves uh, Verdant versus Natives, Domino versus Veneer, Unique versus Nord, and Riddle versus Ru uh, Ruddy. Okay, oh. I would normally ask you what's your... what's. I I'd normally go, right, what do you think the game of the day is going to be? That game four, Ruddy versus That's Riddle, obvious. is going to be an absolute... <laughs> banger of a game that's going to be super good anyway guys thank you very much for joining us here for nlc today we'll be back tomorrow on wednesday same time for another set of four games for week number one so until then good night and we'll see you later